Hello everyone, I'm Ann Petrick, Vice President of Research at Vistage. I'm happy to host the latest webinar in our Peak Performer webinar series. This series is designed to support your leadership climb by bringing the most trusted experts to the Vistage community. Those who provide exceptional insight and best practices to help you navigate new challenges and possibilities. One new possibility that has garnered a lot of headlines is ChatGPT, a platform for generative AI. When we think about the topic and the context of the Vistage decision model, the decisions we want to understand include, how does this new technology impact strategy? How can it drive innovation, supplement our talent, help connect you with customers, or even streamline operations? Many Vistage groups have been discussing the technology and implications. And early findings from the Q1 Vistage CEO Confidence Index Survey that closes on Monday reveals that 40% of CEOs believe AI presents an opportunity, while on the other end of the spectrum, over a third, 35%, believe that it's not relevant at this time. So to help small and mid-sized business leaders understand the opportunities and risks presented by generative AI, such as ChatGPT, we've brought together an expert panel of speakers from the Vistage community. Joining me today are Dave Nelson, who presents to Vistage groups to help executives understand how to embrace technology to improve productivity. Dave is an award-winning CEO who has founded and run several companies, including social media pioneer TalkShoe, and is currently president of Dialogue Consulting Group from my home state of Pennsylvania. Tom Young is a Vistage member and has been an award-winning Vistage speaker since 2001. As a content marketing expert and digital marketing thought leader, his 30 years of experience in marketing and sales has helped thousands of companies increase their sales through his speaking, books, consulting, and digital marketing work. He is founder of Colorado-based digital marketing agency, Intuitive Websites. And finally, Heather Lutze is a widely acclaimed speaker, trainer, and consultant who literally wrote the book on search engine marketing. In fact, she's written three books, and her background is training businesses on paid search as part of the team at Yahoo. She is renowned for her witty, no geek speak style that helps demystify internet marketing for business owners. So welcome, everyone, and thank you for being here. So first, Dave Nelson, welcome. We'll go to you. You can introduce yourself and share an overview from your perspective on why AI chat is important. Perfect. Thanks, Anne. A uh, 15 year Vistage member, speaker since 2009, run a couple different software companies, engineer uh, geek by uh, training. So let's uh, dive in and we all need to find our uh, trusted sources. So we're learning at a rate faster than just our own experience. And one of my favorite is this gentleman right here, Scott Galloway. He's a professor at uh, NYU Stern. And every year at the beginning of the year, he puts out his predictions. And I wanna share with you what he says about 2023. Each year brings a new, new thing in tech, wearables, mobile, 3D printing, blockchain, Web 3.0, the metaverse. Some live up to the hype, most do not, and a few exceed it. So what is the uh, tech of 2023? I believe we're in the midst of a great leap forward in AI and that this tech will be transformative. Keep that word in mind, thanks to its utility. So I know we've been talking about AI for somewhere around 50 years. I gotta tell you, 2023 is the year that this starts to be very practical for small and medium-sized businesses. Now, you may have seen this article in the New York Times at the beginning of December. Good morning, ChatGPT gives an early glimpse at what AI could become. Uh, by the way, this image is uh, generated by AI itself when prompted to uh, do a self-portrait. So you're looking at the first AI selfie there. And uh, you probably know what chat means, but let's break down the acronym. G, generative. This creates new stuff. This is not like using a Google search engine to uh, go find stuff that exists. And I've many times put what it has generated into a plagiarism checker, no plagiarism found. So we're creating new unique content. It is pre-trained on 175 billion internet words and parameters, but just a caveat, its training does not go past the end of 2021. So it can tell you very little about the last 15 months. And then Transformer, and you're gonna see this transforms an awful lot of stuff. This is the website, and uh, you'll wanna go there straight away, chat openai.com create your account it's uh, free although uh, premium is now available for twenty dollars a month 
And to think about this, imagine having a new best friend who is a free unbiased consultant with PhDs in accounting and English and computer science and French literature and engineering and law, and you can ask him anything. I didn't say him, ask him it. I don't know what the heck this thing is. So here's where you ask. So let me show you a very practical example. I have an employee that is sexually harassing another employee. Based on our employee handbook, please draft an email that I can send to the harassing, the harassing employee. This is our policy. And then I go grab three pages from our policy on sexual harassment, copy and paste. And so I throw all this text into the engine. And a few seconds later, I get this. Dear harassing employee, I am writing to inform you. By the way, I'm going to change that. It's not going to say dear harassing employee. Dear Pat, I'm writing to inform you. And uh, it has uh, derived my company name right out of the policy. Acme was what I was using in this example. So it's like super smart. And then it extracted exactly the relevant part of those three pages. This part here came right from that word for word verbatim. So it figured out exactly what was relevant. In the policy, I get down, I put my name at the end, and I've accomplished in a couple of minutes what might have taken a couple of hours before. Wow, that should have knocked you off your chair. Now, our unbiased consultant. This is a Vistage member down in uh, Houston. He runs Pneumatic and Hydraulic Company. And um, I'm going to suggest you all go do exactly what I'm showing you here using Mark as an example. So to the chat engine, you say, I run pneumatic and hydraulic company. Describe yourself a little bit. And then the key question at the end there, how can AI help my business this year? And the response, AI can help your business in several ways this year. Here are some potential examples. Predictive maintenance, which reduces downtime, saving you money. Sales forecasting, which will help you plan inventory and adjust your marketing strategy. It continues chatbots for customer service, which frees up your staff. Predictive quality control, which helps you predict quality issues before they occur. Supply chain optimization, reducing lead times, improving on-time delivery. And so I say, playing Mark, again, please emulate this exactly. Wow, I had no idea that AI could help with sales forecasting. Tell me about some of the products and suppliers in that space. There are a number of AI-powered uh, sales forecasting products. And then it talks about Salesforce Einstein, gives me a little bit of a description. And then it goes on and names five of the players in the space. So there's Zoho, there's Anaplan, there's Tableau, there's Microsoft. You could always ask for more if you wanted to. And then it summarizes. These are just a few of the examples of the many AI-powered sales for forecasting products available today. And so I say, I've never heard of Anaplan. What are, what are their products? Are they appropriate for SMBs? Notice my fearless use of acronyms here. Small and medium-sized businesses. Just throw the acronym at the chat tool. Yes, Anaplan's products are suitable for SMBs as well as large enterprises. Anaplan offers a cloud-based platform that allows businesses to plan, analyze, optimize, etc. Wide range of customers, including small and medium-sized businesses and some large enterprises in these industries. And then it goes on and names some that are relevant to the discussion we're having. Blue Line Rental is an example of one of their SMB customers, as is Black Hawk Network, as is Infrascale. And then it summarizes, Anaplan's platform is designed to be flexible and scalable, so it can be customized to meet the needs of SMBs as well as larger enterprises. So I say, I'd like to talk to someone actually using Anaplan's product. Can you find me an appropriate POC, point of contact, at one of these three customers? And now you will see I bumped up against the limits of its capabilities. As an AI language model, I don't have access to specific customer information or contacts. However, you can easily find customer case studies and contact info uh, for their sales team on their website, right? The chat engine has analyzed the Anaplan website and of course every other one out there. And then it mentions those customer case studies. If you're interested in speaking with a point of contact from one of these companies, fill out the form on the website and a rep will contact you like it knows everything. And then continuing, alternatively, you can also search for customer reviews of their products on third-party websites such as Gartner or Captera to get an idea of how other SMBs are using the platform. Sure enough, there's Anaplan's website with their customer success stories page, and here's Captera. Oh, check this out, Captera, helping 
businesses choose better software since 1999. Don't you wish you knew about that place last time you bought a major product? Yeah, and there's Anna Plans 4.5, and you can read the pros and cons, what their customers think. Now, quick caution, training data does not yet include 22 or later. Uh, that will be rectified later this year when we get to GPT version four. This is three that we've got right now. Servers often hit capacity, so use it off peak uh, or pay the $20 a month for premium access. But here's something that is rather alarming. Uh, one of my password management apps was hacked. And so I was trying to understand the risk and talking to ChatGPT about encryption and security and so on. And in the conversation, it said this. That being said, it is generally considered to be very difficult to guess a random 64 digit hash by brute force. The number of possible combinations of a 64 digit number, 10 to the 64th is 18 quintillion to be exact, and change of course, and it would take an enormous amount of time. And I'm thinking, wait a second, I got a 64 digit number that I can characterize in a 20 digit number of combinations. So I go back at the engine, explain why 10 to the 64th is approximately equal to 18 quintillion. And it says, I apologize for the error in my previous response. 10 to the 64th is not approximately equal to 18 quintillion. It is actually much larger. I apologize. I mean, we passed the Turing test here. I no longer know if I'm talking to a human or a computer. That is just crazy. By the way, the mistake 10 in binary notation is 2. 2 to the 64th is 18 quintillion and change. Leave it to a computer to confuse base 2 and base 10 number systems. Now, I'm going to suggest you go sign up and launch your own questions, just like what I showed you Mark was doing. The only limits of ChatGPT are probably the limits of your own imagination. How about what are the most common complaints people have about my competitors? Oh, some common complaints about your competitors are, or how about this one? Please write a software routine in Swift, Apple's programming language. Now, I misspelled the word programming. In the past, computers were incredibly literal and they would not tolerate those kind of mistakes. But now on we go and boom, it knows all the software languages and it did something very interesting that engineers often don't do. Those two lines I've just hi highlighted in this routine don't do anything from a code perspective. They're not functional. They're there. So if somebody has to come back and later enhance this, the author, in this case, ChatGPT, was explaining what the various routines did. And we get down to the end. And then another thing you don't get from engineers very often, it tells you in English why it did what it did. Amazing. So you're going to find so many uses. And that's just a little introduction. I'm going to throw it back to you. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Dave. And um, you can really see how it can help as a CEO with business functions and just doing general things and making things much faster, much easier. I was reading an article the other day about how employees are uploading confidential company information into chat GPT. Is that a risk in, from your perspective? Uh, we don't know exactly what it's doing with this information. This is also new, November or yeah, November 30, right? So we're into our fourth month with this technology that uh, there's a lot of questions not answered. I would be appropriately cautious because part of why this is out there, as you can see, it's learning by interacting with us humans. And uh, we don't know what it keeps and what might bleed. So be careful. My uh, employment policy I posted is something that I'd be happy to have in public. Uh, just uh, be cautious. Okay, excellent. Well, that sets us up with a big overview. So next we're gonna welcome Tom Young, who is a very popular presenter on past webinars. Um, Tom is a content marketing expert. Let's hear from you on the implications and applications of AI chat. It's great to be here. I wanna start by saying that this, this tool, AI chat GPT, is causing the biggest marketing revolution since the advent of mobile. So I want you all to hear that because you are on the cutting edge of this. And as a Vistage member, you have an opportunity to get in front of this. And we're gonna give you some tools to do that today. And, and I'm gonna talk specifically about, about content marketing and digital marketing and your website. So it's a birth of a marketing revolution. Why? Because of this tool, we can now be so much better at our jobs. And I've, I've done many, many Vistage talks. And what I hear from people is, we don't have time to write content. 
Who's going to write the content? They don't understand my business. Where do I find content writers? And on and on. No more excuses. We now have a tool that can write first draft marketing content on, on basically any topic. And it's only going to get better. We're in the early stages of this. That's how it helps your company. It also helps your customers. And you're here to help your customers. It helps your customers with amazing research with limited login. Well, we just saw Dave do. He did by having something saved in his browser and just starting to type. He didn't have to worry about a login and a credit card and who's watching this and what's happening there. He just got information. And what's going to happen next is all of that's going to be available via voice. So as soon as we get to the, to the next level of, of ChatGPT and other providers, you'll be on your phone or you'll be on your Apple device or your Amazon device or your Google device, and you'll be talking and having a conversation with, with this tool. This can help your sales team dramatically. And if you if you listen to my business talk, I've talked about how uh, salespeople have it tough today. Not only is it hard to find prospects, prospects know so much when you're engaging in a sales conversation. This tool now helps level the field for salespeople, improves their knowledge and so forth. And we cannot underestimate the importance of what it's going to do for coding, what it's already doing for coding. And the reason I love it as a marketer is you can create middle of funnel tactics to move people through conversion rate optimization, which allows you to capture email addresses, which are so important today. Without email addresses, in the near future, you're, you're not going to be able to see people find them or talk to them as easily as you can now. So creating apps and calculators and other tools is going to be super important. And if you think about marketing for a second, I want to I want to back up here and say, well, what is the secret sauce of AI chat? Why do people use it? Well, they're trying to avoid some kind of pain or solve a problem. They're trying to gain something they desire. And in many cases, it's going to be save time and money. So if you know that, if you know that's why they're going to this tool, then you want to position yourself to do that and to help them. And you do it by asking questions around real benefits and real risks. So what are the benefits of your products and services? What are the risks of your products and services? And the reason I want you to ask about the risks is because you're going to hear the objections people have to doing business with you. You can also ask about the risks of no action. What are the risks of taking no action? And what are the downsides? You ask these questions because you are the guide, the customer is the hero. You are not the hero saving the customer. The customer sees you as a guide, a trusted guide, and AI chat tools are fantastic for that. And then this clarity then will give much more focus to your marketing and it'll drive results. How does AI help do this? Well, it helps through content marketing. As I mentioned, it helps you better content around benefits and risks, and it helps you write first drafts. Now, I've written three books, and Heather knows this too. <laughs> The first draft is always the hardest. The first draft is the hardest. You have a blank piece of paper in front of you and you got to start writing. Well, what about if you have a first draft? It's fantastic, right? Especially if you're a non-writer. And I want you to think about AI chat as a first draft because I don't want you to post AI chat content to your website without some kind of human interaction on it. And it's much more than the website. You can use it for social posts, for email marketing, and for posts that you can share on other websites. Because by the way, AI chat looks for your uh, expertise and credibility in the market. So it's gonna wanna see that you are on other websites and you have things published that you're not just one website with a few posts. And then of course, I talked about creating middle funnel tools like apps and, and other things and calculators and so forth. And the real value from today, this is the million dollar slide from today is, what are some questions I can ask the AI chat to help me with my marketing? And Dave uh, had some great questions for the overview. I want to I want to dive in a little bit deeper here. I'm going to show you an example of a client that we use this these questions to come up with excellent benefits and excellent support to a marketing plan. I'm going to share my my browser. Give me one second. Okay, so I put this all in a in a Google Doc because then we didn't have to worry with the, the chat timing out or anything like that because it's exactly right during peak time we have issues. So I asked a question for our client. Our client is a roofing contractor with the specialty in preventing leaking roofs. <laughs> so they get in there and prevent the leaking roof before it causes a million dollars worth of damage. They're, they're a vintage company based in Atlanta. What are the consequences of a leaking roof and water damage for a commercial building? The responses are fantastic. 
This gives such a head up to a content writer. And these are more than just content. This is where you should have thought leadership is in this space, right? And then I followed up that question with, well, what are the key benefits of regular roof maintenance then? If we know it's a problem, if our roof leaks, what's the benefits of having maintenance? And once again, fantastic benefit-focused answers that we want to feature on the homepage of our website and on the key landing pages of our website. And I look at, at, at dozens of websites every, every week when I do a Vistage talk, I look at websites and I'm trying to figure out, number one, what does this company do and what's the value on this website? Look at how this tool can help us answer those two questions. But I went a step further and I asked the question, okay, great. Well, that sounds like that's important to have this maintenance, but what's the ROI on it? What's the risk return benefit ratio for me? Well, the AI tool will answer that question and boom, we've got a whole other set of thought leadership responses and, and blog posts and email, all this stuff will support us with digital content. And then I thought, well, that's all great, but how do I build a middle of funnel tool to capture someone's email address when they want to see the ROI? Can you write an ROI calculator to measure the investment in roof maintenance? And boom, certainly, here's an ROI calculator. Now, you can make this decision, you know, should I put this behind a password and a login? Should I ask someone to give me their email address before I give them the calculator? We can talk about the strategies behind that. But look at the flow through the funnel and look at how content is being generated to meet customer needs. If you do these things on your website, you will see higher conversion rates. Do you see higher conversion rates? You see higher sales growth. You're going to see more people contacting your sales team. Let me come back to the slides and I'm going to share my screen again. So I can share the slides with you um, and, and, and give you these, these questions, but I want you to play around with these and start using that content on your website. And then you can also use the same content with the sales team. And I recently wrote a book called Sales and Marketing Alignment with Carl Becker. In our book, we talk about how sales and marketing teams must come together to drive uh, conversion rate optimization through all processes. And AI Chat Now is a great tool to make that happen. When you start using this chat tool, this is a mindset shift for you. Get outside of your head and get inside the head of the customer. So let's ask the questions that your customer asks. Once again, that's why sales and marketing alignment is so important because the sales team hears the questions and objections from the customers. And that has to be part of this, this focus on producing content that really matters and makes a difference. The other thing that's come up in this, and this is a, still some unknowns around this, but that is, will your brand get found in AI chat? So we have 100 million people using this tool, and soon it'll be, it'll be more than that, 200 million people using the tool, whatever that number is. Will your brand get found? Now, the, the, the AI chat tools, they say that they're a language-based model. They're not going to be displaying brands and so forth, but that's not true. It's already starting to happen. We're seeing company names appear in, in chat return. So you've got to have your company name return. And if somebody does a search for your brand and they want to learn more about your specific brand, what do you want that chat tool to say? you've got to build experience, expertise, authority, and trust, just like you do for your website around SEO. But you've got to go further than that. You need to be writing ebooks. You need to be having your content placed on other websites. And you need to be testing yourself through AI chat GPT to see what, what it's saying about your brand and how it's coming up. I have been testing the Microsoft Edge browser, which has the chat GPT tool integrated into the search function. And I'll tell you right now, it's a mess. It's just a mess. It's not clear. It's not intuitive. They're using icons. And the, the GPT chat tool in that browser does not work as well as the, the tool that, that Dave and I just showed for you. So there's a dissonance there. And I have a feeling that Google's going to come in and close that gap and do a great job because Google also has an AI chat tool that's about to hit the market. Um, there's a lot of secrecy and unknown about it and what's going to happen. But sooner or later, Google will have a, a tool, and I predict that they're going to do pretty well with it. Now, we're painting a really rosy picture, but I just also want you to know that, that it, there, there are some unknowns here, and there are some things to watch out for. Um, be careful for inaccuracies. We have seen that, that, that the chat tool is creating stories in some cases, creating research papers that don't even exist, creating towns that don't exist. So be, 
be careful, check your facts. And I don't feel that you should take the, the chat content word for word and put it on your website. And I, I feel pretty strongly that Google's gonna block that because that doesn't build credibility for websites. And it also is an open door for spammers. Google does not like that. So make sure that you're aware of copyright issues and plagiarism issues. If you're gonna use 100% chat content, credit the chat. Say, hey, this was created by the AI chat. This is what we found. But otherwise, I recommend that you put a personality on this content, that you make some changes to it, make it your own and make it relevant. And then I think you'll be fine with, with using this content. Also, be aware that Google and Bing are the biggest players currently. Eventually, they'll partner up with Apple and with Amazon. But for now, we've got to watch Google and see what happens. That could be another big change in this. Check out my books on Amazon because I talk quite a bit about content marketing and the fundamentals of how this is all going to work. And feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to uh, leave this information with you. I can share the slides with you. We can schedule a 30-minute follow-up. Or if you're a Vistage chair, I'd be happy to talk to you about getting this content out to your groups. So if you've heard me speak, I always leave with action items. I really want you to take action on this. It's a very simple ask. Dave asked it as well. Start using this tool at your company and use it like you use Google now. Focus on benefits, risks, brainstorm content ideas, and then let's start seeing better blogs, better web pages, better social copy. Don't write social copy to fill space, please. We don't need that. Write social copy of real value for folks and then use it for first drafts. Or use it for first drafts for email and so forth. And use it for strategies for getting found. And I'm going to turn it over to Heather and she's going to dive deeper into using AI tools to get found. Unless there's any questions, Heather, take it away. <laughs> and do you have anything to add? I'm sorry. No, I think, um, yeah, we'll come back to some of the questions. There was a lot of chat in uh, about plagiarism and Tom, you addressed that, but we'll come back to that in our Q&A. So yeah, let's go to you, Heather, and then we'll leave some time for all of the questions that we had in advance and that are coming in today. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, hello everyone. My name is Heather Lessie, and um, I can set, put my show mode in here. Um, I've been speaking for Vistage for about twelve years now. I think I've done over four hundred uh, presentations over twelve years, and you start to see some patterns in that. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started here. As soon as my computer, there we go. That look good for everyone. And does that look good? Um, yeah, you can swap to the presenter view. Got that taken care of. Okay. I'm sorry, hold on just a second. All right. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. All right, so any of you have ever seen me speak or, or have read my books, um, I am a implementation nerd. Like I love concept and strategy and Dave and, and Tom have done such a wonderful job at setting that, setting that uh, foundational piece. I like to take it another step further. I like to create a toolkit by which chat GPT can really help us to execute a content in a way that's meaningful and a way that's really gonna represent your brand in the best possible way. So what we're gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you a process by which you can start with a keyword phrase, then you can get a formula for that keyword phrase, and then you can let chat GPT and other tools I'm gonna to show you to then execute that process, all right? So here are some of the, the, the tools we're gonna look at this morning. Um, build a content creation machine with AI. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is you've got to know, so understand that when you create a piece of content in a, in a, and Thomas re, uh, referred to this as a, you want it to get found. You want it to make sure that it's in alignment with what people are searching. And you wanna be able to get the cheat sheet for what should I write in order for it to rank on page one. So I'm gonna show you that process. Next, I'm gonna show you once that you have your information, then we are going to use a tool called jasper.ai and we're gonna create a blog post based on specific SEO parameters. So we're not just hoping for the best here. We're gonna make sure that we're aligning our content with the very best, um, very best chance for it to get ranked. Then we're gonna look at how do I take that blog, turn it into a video, and then how do I take that video and turn it into social assets? 
So we've got a really beautiful content path that you can replicate um, as you're doing your um, as you're doing your social and your marketing. So the first thing I like to look at is what is a simple tool to be able to understand how people are searching? And there's so many super expensive tools out there. This is a Chrome add-on. It is called Keywords Everywhere. And what it does, it's going to show exactly how many searches are happening per keyword right inside of Google. So here's what it looks like. So I'm going to use executive coaching as an example. So when I go in to search for, in just in Google, executive coaching, I have my keywords everywhere turned on. It's one of those little Chrome add-ons that shows up in the, in the bar. So first of all, I want to make sure that I'm tapping into what it is people really want. If I am Vistage and I want to be more visible to executive coaching, not only am I going to have to know the phrase that I'm optimizing for, but I also want to know what are the other derivatives that I should consider using in my article. So you'll see here, executive coaching gets 9,900 searches per month and the pay-per-click or cost per click is $5.32. So if you do the math, that's a lot of money. So let's see if we can figure out how to use ChatGPT and similar tools to be able to let Google know that you deserve to be on page one. So I'm gonna make a note that yes, executive coaching at 9,900 searches a month, that's a month. So if you wanna times it by 12 to understand maybe the potential if you got on that page over the course of a year would be substantial. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm also gonna take a look at some other elements, services, benefits, articles, topics. I'm gonna to weave those elements into my copy. Clearly services has the most amount of search volume, but I'm gonna just, I like to take screen grabs of these things and you guys can certainly do that on, on your end too. Just do a screen grab of something you see. All right, so once I know my keyword, which is executive coaching, now this is a more advanced tool. This is a tool called SEMrush and really any, any search marketing geek probably already uses this or some similar tool. Um, here's the, this tool is specifically interesting because it has something called the SEO content template. Now, what that means is that for any given keyword on the internet, there is a specific algorithm for that page one standard. So executive coaching, why are those sites there, right? What makes those the ones that Google picks? Well, I don't have a lot of time to figure out exactly why they picked that, but SEMrush will give me a cheat sheet. And what that cheat sheet is, is a shortcut. So if these are the top 10 sites that currently rank for that phrase, let's figure out what makes them all common, right? How much content are they writing? What topics are they talking about similarly? And then finally, what is the average amount of content that each of those top 10 are creating? So here's what it looks like. And you can scan these QR codes and it'll take you to these resources as well. Now, each one of these is already ranking. You'll see this is right there, Brava. Okay, so each one of these is currently ranking there. And I'm gonna, I know that I can look through those things, you might want to consider potentially maybe linking to some of these assets. You know, these are this is the popular crowd. <laughs> these are the cool kids that get to be found uh, on page one for executive coaching. So we're going to take that into consideration. Now we're going to move on to what is it that I have to do to actually rank for this phrase? So inside of the tool in SEM Rush, SEM Rush called the SEO content template. These are all the phrases I need to include in my article. I just need to make sure I check those off. And then the average amount of content across the top 10 is 910 words. So I try to get as close to that as possible. All right, so now we have our keyword. We've got our, we got our phrases we need to conclude in the article and we know how much content to write. So now I'm gonna bump over to jasper.ai. Chat GPT is the engine underneath Jasper. Once you log into Jasper, you're going to see under templates, you're going to see all these different options. Uh, you're going to see blog posts and, and content improvers. I'm going to show you just one of the quicker ones, which is called the one shot blog post. And here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in all the information I've already received into Jasper. Okay, so what I wanna show you here is over at the top here, I would put in, I thought I changed it, but it would 915, whatever that number was into Jasper. And then I put right, 
So write that exact phrase uh, or that exact amount of words, three reasons why every CEO should have executive coaching. Then I, I do a little more tweaking, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take from that cheat sheet I just showed you from SEM Rush, I am going to paste all of the phrases that the top 10 are currently using. That would probably be helpful for page one ranking. I've also grabbed all the questions out of Google. So whenever you Google anything, if you scroll down, in most cases, you will see a series of questions. If I, as a thought leader who wants to get on page one, if I answer those questions, then I am going to look more like a page one standard. That's what I want, okay? And then I'm also gonna give some resource URLs. So this could be, I use Vistage for this example, but there's all different kinds of other phrases that you are other websites that you could potentially ask Jasper to cite in your content. Okay, so here's what's happened is I have gone in and I have said, okay, blog title, three reasons every CEO should have executive coaching. Now, what you'll notice is that as it's building this, it's taking its cues for an SEO optimized page and it's going to include these phrases. It's gonna answer these questions and it's also going to reference issues or things inside of uh, inside of the Vistage website. So that's a one shot. I mean, literally you hit the button and generate. The difference here than just putting what's my unicorn name <laughs> into ChatGPT, uh, it's really being able to create a substantial outline of content where you're baiting it with how much words the, the kind of title you want, the keywords that the top 10 are currently using, and the questions I should be answering that show up in Google search results. So this is incredibly important. If you're looking at, at SEO, it is very important and, that you follow certain rules that are already established for page one. And that's what I've done here. Now, now that I have my blog post, I post it up on my website. Now, what other assets can I take that content and then repurpose it to other mediums. So video being incredibly difficult, I find for clients to be able to easily create video. Now there's good, better, best, right? There's, there's something you just whip out from your cell phone. There's one that you would maybe produce through a videographer. And then there's another one that I like to call explainer videos. So an explainer video is where you would come in here and what it does is it, I copy and pasted all the content that Jasper AI just gave me. Now, if you have an existing blog post, you could do it right there at the top where it says add a URL. I would just pop my blog URL in there. It's gonna pull all the content out of here and then it creates a video that is going to then be, it picks the animations, it picks the video clips, it grabs certain elements from the blog post and then creates a pretty good, video that you can go in and you can you can adjust and you can do all kinds of things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop out and show you Lumen 5. All right, so let's go down here. All right, so let's see over here. Okay, so here's Lumen 5. So when you come in here, this tool is $82 a month, just to kind of give you a sense of the cost of these things. So you can come in here and you can pick any number of um, styles. Now you can always go in and change the styles, but I usually go with something very simple and then I can always go in and I can adjust it for, for looks and things like that. Now I'm gonna go into Lumen and I've what I've done here is I've put in all of the content that Jasper gave me, all right? which is pretty good. And I've got the keyword count and the, and the phrases I needed to put in there for page one standards. Now you hit convert to video. And what it does is it starts converting each section of the blog into a relevant slide or a scene in the video, as well as it's taking its cues by how you have it organized. So if I have an organized and I really had, you know, concept one, concept two, Concept three, right? Just like Jasper, it will it will grab onto that outline and then make a video that matches that outline as well. So let me show you the final. Hope you guys can see this. I'm going to show you the final.
Okay, well, you guys get the idea. Now to take it, I know I'm up, to take it to the next level, what I would do is I would go to my YouTube and I would create a playlist called executive coaching. And every time I create an executive coaching video, I'm going to pop it into my YouTube playlist. So there you have it. That's all I have. <laughs> That was incredible. I think there was a lot of a uh, lot of minds being blown, and just thinking about not just Chat GPT, but the other AI that that can help guide you to some of this. So, so thank you so much. Um, I love how Dave opened us up with really broad business applications and writing letters to employees based on your policy. And Tom brought us down to marketing and Heather, like such great practical application of, of what AI can do. And I do appreciate all of the chatter that's going on in the chat and some of the recommendations and insights that some of our attendees are sharing. So um, before we go to our questions from the audience, um, any comments, Dave, Heather, Tom, before we jump in? I just encourage people to jump in, start to get hands on. And you think about any role where you're a content creator. That's you as an executive talking to the company or talking to your industry association. It's your marketing people, it's your sales people, it's HR. So much of what we do in business is about content creation. Your question should be, can I use one of these AI engines to help me with that first draft? Yeah, I, I love the first draft idea. And so many of the questions centered around ethics of having the content created by AI, as well as the, the, the concept of plagiarism. So um, Dave, do you want to start off with, with um, your perspective on that? Well, again, we're, we're learning, but um, I'm going to go with the idea of first draft. And while when I showed that sexual harassment letter, I said, you know, a couple of minutes instead of a couple hours, I'm actually going to read over the thing carefully myself so I can own every bit of it. And um, again, what the AI can't do is customize to a given audience. And so first draft and then, uh, you know, own it, which means you are the editor. That's really the the role of the human ask the right questions give it the right tasks but then you are that editor that is the function of the human in tandem with generative ai okay is there a yeah, yeah. oh go ahead tom well I, was just, I wanted to add on on what what dave said i've been watching some of the chat there and, and, and it's like you just got a you just got a really supercharged machine here you still need a driver Somebody has to drive this machine, right? And so you've got to you've got to do your prep work and focus on the fundamentals, and then use this as a tool to really accelerate what you're doing. But to just rely on the tool without a driver, that's a recipe for disaster. So be careful there. Yeah, and and, and just to kind of expand on that topic is, um, you know, making sure that you know some of the biggest struggles that my clients have is just being able to generate content on a consistent basis. And, you know, this is a great process to be able to create a cadence of content that you issue every single week so that the burden of trying to write blog posts, pretty much the shame game kicks in, right? Like, you got my blog? Where's my blog? Oh, I'm, I'm going to get to it. It's the top of my next, like that whole, that whole chasing people for content is a terrific waste of time, unless you can really tote, you know, you know, get them for like 10 minutes and then write like crazy. So this might be a better way. So have it written, but then make sure to have it QA'd with the people inside your organization to make sure that what you're saying is in alignment with what the company does and sells. Yeah, and I think, you know, having the driver asking the right questions and doing the fact checking, I know that there's a lot of concern about, you know, can this replace, replace content creators um, at some level? Yeah. But, from my point of view, I uh, with the Daniel Pink interview that it did last month, I asked ChatGPT to write me um, various forms of blogs on how small and sized business leaders can use regrets to you know optimize their business. And I asked a whole bunch of questions. The one thing that I noted is right off the bat, it sourced the wrong book. Uh -huh. Daniel Pink's right it cited another book so you know to me I was like okay well this is a great I mean the rest of it was good but you know I felt like that was like the Easter egg or something like I could immediately find that this was wrong and I needed to change that so that to me says you know this is not just copy paste into the blog but the first draft concept is and the time it saves is really um, impactful okay so getting into and uh, you know you recommend sourcing it chat AI, or if you're editing it, 
to an extent that you don't feel like you need to source it. I know that we talked about this when we were originally planning. How and when do you source that any draft came from um, an AI platform? Tom, Tom jump in. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. So, you know, what Heather was just showing was how you take content that would be generated by AI and modify it to meet a business need. And the key, key term here is modify it. So if you, if you go and say, write a blog post on this topic and then paste it to your website, I think there are risks in doing that. I think risk number one is Google could say to your website, hey, we think you might be a spammer, not gonna rank you. That's risk number one. Risk number two is people might read that and over time say, wait a minute, these guys are kind of lazy with their content. That doesn't look right. So it needs that human element. It needs that modification. But I want to come back to the idea of a first draft and how important a first draft is. There's a lot of unknowns here. The other part of this equation is you got to stay up on this. So not only do you want to use the chat tool, but you need to be, you know, subscribe to digital marketing publications, right? So you know what the latest is going on. So when, when Google releases their, their tool, you have access to it. Or if Google makes an announcement saying they're going to block content out of the blue, you have to be aware of that. I mean, you know, for us as resources, for you as speakers, I, we have a newsletter and intuitive websites. You can subscribe to that. We're staying on top of these, these things. As soon as um, the latest versions of ChatGPT come out, we test them. We'll, we'll write on that. As soon as BARD is released, you guys know BARD is the name of the Google tool, uh, BARD, B-A-R-D. As soon as BARD is released, we're going to be writing about how effective BARD is. And so, so you know, stay up to date on that. Uh, you mentioned the risk of Google. How is Google going to handle the indexing of AI generated content? Will those pages rank or will, will Google even know um, what's generated by AI versus a human? I think eventually it will know. <laughs> I think it's going to take some time. Uh, the content is, is, an, uh, is unique, as David said earlier in his program. Um, I think that the real trick is making sure that you follow the SEO guidelines, if at all possible, that you have great sources that you're citing and, and making sure that your article is indeed well um, cited and referenced, as well as really making sure that an expert in their space has reviewed it. Um, there's another one that I use called um, otter.ai. And otter actually will let you um, just record a conversation with someone in your company, take that recording, pop it into Jasper. And now you're kind of starting from a reverse model where you're going to the expert first, you're, you're, you're getting verbatim Q&A standard, if you will. And then you put that interview into chat. So go the opposite direction to make sure that the content you get out of this is actually sourced from someone who really knows their stuff. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Google does. Yeah. Um, is it true that Google's changing the algorithm um, affecting the ability to measure success? Is that that's, that's a big question. Um, I like to think that Google changes its algorithm to keep the junk out and the good stuff in. And if you follow the rules and you're committed to content generation and you're, you know, you're more or less a thought leader and not a salesman, that's very important that you think about yourself as a thought leader, then I think that the changes in algorithm, you might see a little bit of a shift. But we found over time that if you if you do the right things and using the right tools, that's not going to affect you as much. And I would say with respect to Google, yeah. Google is already AI uh, driven. And one of the things that they're doing when they serve results, they know a lot about e each of us. They look at how we engage with the content. Yeah. And so really what ranks on um, Google is stuff that people engage with. And so your goal should be to create good, valuable content for your target audience so they will engage and you are then perfectly aligned with Google, even though their algorithm changes literally daily on a person for person basis. Yeah. It's so true. I, I in my Vistage talks, I, I, I pose this question, which is, what does Google want? So we want to get inside the head of Google. <laughs> and I know that what Heather said is is right on. Number one thing Google wants is no spam. The minute spam filtrates the search engine, the minute they lose their effectiveness, none of us have a contract to use Google. None of us have a contract to use ChatGPT or Bing or any of these services. They have to provide value. So avoiding spam is number one. If you do anything that's spam related, you run the risk of not getting found. And so what Google wants to do, number two, you know, that Google wants to do is keep its people on Google and sell ads. And that's how they make money. So 
So that's my concern as well, is to watch to see what happens with ads. The last thing we want to see is commercials show up in front of our you know, AI results. I, I hope that doesn't happen, but we'll, we'll see where this goes. But the key thing I think here is to, to stay up on it and, and to be aware. Th this is the future for marketing. It's, it's, it's the future for improved business operations. So stay on top of it. And by the way, people are already building generative uh, text detectors, uh, one of which is called GPT-0. So ultimately, I think the, the uh. if you take this as a first draft and then you own it, you edit it, you customize it to your audience, you'll be good. Don't take anything straight away. Yeah, because I, I, one of the comments we had is, won't, the, won't these blogs or chatbots start sounding the same over time as every blog, as everyone's asking the same kind of questions and trying to generate the similar kind of content? So if you or your, you know, another executive coaching firm does the same exercise, could they t technically end up with something that looks very, very similar because they're using the same resource? I think in answer to the question, it's going to give you what you give it. It's going to give you a wonderful output. So you know, if you are snarky, put snarky in there, right? If you're professional, you are very scientific, like make sure you're giving it the outcome that you want it to write to. If you just let it kind of go, and I put executive coaching in there, go, right? It's going to be incredibly boring and it's going to look like AI. But mm -hmm. if you give it a little bit of something, something, you're going to get a lot better of a more unique approach to the AI content. Yeah, we have yeah. so many questions about, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, don't underestimate the ability of the human to know the difference between a human and a robot. So if there, there, it, there's these videos going around on the, on the internet now that, that, are, that are created videos trying to make political figures act like they said something, mm -hmm. but there's these subtle things that happen in there and you go, wait a minute, this doesn't look right. Something's mm -hmm. off. We're going to get better and better at that as, as humans start to interact with AI content. And humans will know if it's 100% AI, we're going to start to know that. And I, I think that won't make your brand as strong as, as really expressing your thought leadership properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of questions about trust and, you know, how do you trust that it's correct? Mm -hmm. Or even, you know, are, can these tools be trained with bias integrated into them? So how, how do you learn to trust the, the tools? that they're returning something that's not biased and correct. Trust, but verify. Trust, but exactly. Verify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good for well, a lot you of know, it. So, so we, what, it, it, when we do that, if you do that exercise that I talked about where you do the benefits and the risks, the missing part of that is you've got to have your input into that because yeah. you might miss a huge benefit, right? But, but it's like I said, it's a first draft, it's a starting point. And the reason it's important is because so many websites lack that now. And frankly, so many Vistage web, websites lack that. I still do presentations where, you know, half the members in the group have no major benefits on their homepage, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we've got some work to do. Yeah. By the way, one other thing I'll say about content generated by ChatGPT, when you're ha having it help you do marketing content, a lot of times Vistage members fail to have the call to action. And because ChatGPT has studied essentially all of this stuff and knows what's strong versus weak, it's really solid on putting in the calls to action. So I've been super impressed with uh, you know, the content when I'm asking it to generate marketing copy for me. Yeah, and what I would do as well is like, have you read enough? Would you like to talk to a human? Right, I put it like I bake it in right in the middle and toward the bottom because people tend to not read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I like to maybe say, you know what? You don't have to read the whole thing. I got you, right? <laughs> you put it right there with a phone number and a download or whatever's, and you know, you're going to get a lot, like Dave said, you're going to get a lot better results from that content. Yeah. Are there resources for the prompts or writing questions, the prompt structure? Like, how do you get the best first draft in terms of writing good questions? Are there good resources for people to get up to speed on that? Well, so, so, so my, my belief at this point is that you've got to have strong marketing people at your business that would know those questions to ask. We are certainly a resource for you. I, I would love to be a resource for you. I've been doing content marketing since 1998. And so, um, you know, reach out. We can have a discussion and talk more about that. I think, I think the training around content marketing, the fundamentals of content marketing, 
that all applies here. This is a tool to improve upon what you should know as a content marketing expert. Yeah, and, and you know, I same with uh, as well as uh, Tom is uh, I'm willing to kind of have an AI sort of update meeting if you would like to uh, schedule. You know, we can talk about how to apply the AI tools to your business. Um, but you know, that's up to you. But you know, take this like look, take what you've learned and and just put it into action. Right, do something with the information that you've learned today. Yeah. If someone teaches chat the company keywords and does a lot of this, is that not going back into the pool of what it knows? And could competitors benefit from that or gain access to that information? They can do it now. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> there are tons of tools. Yeah, to have to find. <laughs> yeah. What are your what are your competitors' keywords? And you know, what is the ranking of their website? And you know, like that 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 ship has sailed. Like we can get so much competitive intelligence. Um, but yeah, you could like like I saw we saw earlier, right? A, a chat GPT article on why a, a competitor is not as good as you. Right, right. <laughs> Give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 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 I challenge Vistas, I, I challenge Vistas companies to do this. Go look at your competitors' websites, go look at what they're doing with content and find ways to improve, improve upon it. This is you're not going to spend millions of dollars to do this. It's brain power. Use the AI chat tool for the brain power to talk better about benefits, to talk more about the risks involved. And then you'll, you'll rise above the noise. That's, that's what you'll do with these competitors. And don't be afraid of competitors. Do it better than they're doing it. That's your challenge. I have to reinforce something Heather said earlier when she talked about SEM Rush. It's a great tool. The subtitle description on it yeah. is competitors research, and it will literally show you the traffic on your competitors' websites, what is coming from what keywords, what is paid versus organic. And what it allows you to do is figure out essentially who's winning, and then you dissect their strategy. Right, right. And also there was some questions earlier about, you know, do I have to buy all these tools? I guess I would invite you to consider what you're spending now and see maybe are there things maybe that you've used forever that maybe you could pause and then maybe try Jasper or try you know, Lumen5 and just give it a try and kind of mix it up with your marketing and see if that's something that we're not trying to suggest that you're going to have a bunch of money to spend. Just try these different things and see if it's a good match. They are relatively inexpensive, maybe outside of SEMrush. Yeah, it's a great point. I, I did really quick I want to jump on that. Some of these tools are easier than others, and some of the tools you should use, and other tools you want to have an agency help you with. And SEMrush can get complicated really fast if you don't have yeah. a, an expert there. But absolutely, you need these tools. There's no question. The ROI you're going to get from these tools will pay for themselves many, many times <laughs> over. Yeah. Um, a few hundred dollars a month, you're going to land hundreds of thousands of dollars in business if you do this right. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I know that there is a lot more that we have to talk about, and I appreciate all of you for being here today. I learned a lot. There was a lot of great chatter. I know our members found this to be incredibly valuable as well. So thank you so much for being here. Happy chatting, everybody. Thank you, dear. Yes. Yeah. So sadly, that's all the time we have um, for today. For our attendees, we will be sending a link to today's recording and the slides within 24 hours. I want to remind you about some upcoming webinars that we have uh, for our members. We have a member exclusive session on Thursday, March 16th with Stanford professor Jasper, Jasper Sorensen, and he's hosting a webinar on vision and discovery, leading strategy in a changing world. And that's exclusively for Vistage members as part of our partnership with Stanford. And then on April 7th, Vistage Chief Research Officer Joe Galvin will share his insights from our latest research report being released this month, CEO Projections 2023, Growing Forward. You can register for that session now at vistage.com slash webinar. That's vistage.com slash webinar. Thanks everyone for your time today. Be safe and be well.